Anybody who studies the Quran seriously knows that Allah records on multiple occasions how prophets were insulted, how they were made fun of, how they were rejected in the most obscene ways, and how even they, the prophets themselves felt the pain of those disbelievers making fun of them. Nuh alayhi salam complains about how people found him disgusting and that they would plug their ears you know, with their fingers and walk away from him and pull their clothes back as a show of insult to him. And our Prophet is no exception sallallahu alayhi wa This Quran that honors our Prophet also at the same time records the most hurtful words that were said to him. That the Prophet himself would have to recite and remind himself of the words that were said about him. Sahir, magician, you know, majnoon, insane, kadhab, a perpetual liar. So many accusations are made against our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they're all recorded in the Quran. Allah wants us to remember that this is a fact. That all Prophets, the most, though they are the most noble of Allah's creation and that Allah Himself has honored them, at the same time are people that will face the worst kinds of insults and the worst kinds of ridicule. But what is supposed to be the reaction? And if anybody is supposed to be angry and just be overwhelmed with rage when the Prophet is insulted, I would argue it would be his companions whose faith can't even be compared to yours and mine. But how come they don't react the way we do? How come they're not having any protest? How come they're not going out and you know, uh, uh, yelling and screaming in rage? Because they understand that the Qur'an didn't just come to give them a love for their Prophet, but also to guide that love. And to also teach them how to respond to these kinds of insults. How is it that we don't know that the Prophet himself is told يقولون, Be patient over whatever they say. I'm fascinated by this ayah because the word ma means whatever. Whatever they say, not whatever they've said, whatever they might even come up with. And the mulare form in the Arabic suggests what they may have said in the past, but the present and even the future till this day. The Prophet's policy is to be patient himself Where in the Quran does it justify our anger like this? And actually is our anger even justified? If anything I argue, the one thing we should feel towards those who hate us and make hateful speech towards Muslims is sorrow. We should feel sorry for these people. They can't hurt the Prophet. They can't take away his honor. It was given from the sky. It was given from Allah. Nothing on earth can take it away. No article, no cartoon, no film, no speaker, no hate speech, you know, no form of art. And it's not going to take away the dignity of our Prophet And these films and these kinds of attempts are futile, wasteful attempts to try to undermine the message of Islam and to misrepresent Islam. But think about it. Us reacting in this emotional manner and engaging in senseless violence, is this not also misrepresenting Islam? Aren't we doing exactly what people want, you know, the enemies of Islam want for Islam to be misrepresented? If anything makes me angry, it's the anger at our own selves that we don't understand the policy of the Quran and how to res res respond to insults. Respond with that which is best. Finally, I want to share with you guys, some people think that this was an early policy in Islam, that in the Meccan time of the Prophet, that he was supposed to be passive. But when the Prophet migrated, he, and battles began like Badr and Uhud and Ahzab and Tabuk, etc. Now the policy was not to be patient, and therefore we should take that. Let's look at Ali Imran, the battle of Uhud. What does Allah say to us? وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا You will absolutely hear hurtful words from those who were given the book way before you and people who commit idolatry and blasphemy with God. You will hear word hurtful speech absolutely coming from them. These kinds of things are a manifestation, a proof that Allah prepared us mentally for that. But what was supposed to be our reaction? God Himself tells us, Allah Himself tells us. If you can be patient and you can maintain your consciousness of Allah, then that is the most noble of deeds, the highest of accomplishments that you can accomplish. That is supposed to be the, the reaction of the Muslim. This video was watched by what, 30 people? This loser and his cousins? Before we gave it support. We made it popular. We're the ones that are giving it more flame. And I, I, I want to end with this. You know, in school, bullies tease the kid that they know takes the teases and gets, you know, it, 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 they, he shows a reaction. The more we react in this way, the more we're encouraging others to you know, pursue more hateful speech. We have to learn to respond in mature, civil, and higher discourse the way the Qur'an and the Sunnah of our Messenger, the legacy of our Prophet expects from us. I pray that this is a message that reaches all of my young brothers and sisters that are feeling the sadness, the, the, the rage because of this incident. But I hope to turn that rage and I hope you can turn that rage into something positive. There are people who hate Islam, you know that. That hatred is based a lot of the times on ignorance.
ignorance. Because of that, they hate the Prophet ﷺ due to that ignorance. I'd like to put it at ignorance. I don't want to get it further because I've seen people who've hated and later on they became Muslim. Okay, so we don't want to say anything besides ignorance. They're ignorant. So one of the Dutch MPs, senior, a senior guy in the political hierarchy, he decided to fire up something called draw a cartoon of Muhammad 2018 Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? And the competition is on. A'udhu Billah. May Allah protect us and may Allah guide everyone. What will it do to us? It is provoking us. That's what it is. Provocation. Someone telling you we're going to draw dirty cartoons and it's my right to do it. We tell them, my dear brother in humanity, you're making a mistake. You don't know the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't know Islam. You're blaming a faith that has promoted peace over the centuries by looking at a few issues that have affected you and perhaps those around you and a few others and you're blaming two billion people and on top of that the messenger peace be upon him who brought about a lot of the goodness that we have today from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm talking of as mankind a lot of what we have today is taken from islam whether you like it or not you might be ignorant but it actually is so we say my dear brother in humanity we'd like you to rethink that position you are inciting and provoking people to do that which nobody on earth wants and that is violence that is hatred that is enmity that is warfare we don't want it the muslims are being killed more than anything else take a look at the millions that have been killed within the last 12 years 15 years who killed them go back and check may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us may allah strengthen us as an ummah may allah grant us wisdom so the reaction how should it be they will keep on drawing their cartoons but i want you to consider something when they harmed nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in ta'if and in his life in his person he reacted with a beautiful dua he reacted in a calm way as a result they turned to islam wholesale i guarantee you my brothers and sisters from this pulpit of friday here in masjid al quds in cape town i want to tell you every time they have drawn cartoons or come out with blasphemous videos scores of people have turned to islam as a direct result of what they did I guarantee you that is what has happened and keeps on happening today. It's very difficult to enter the fold of Islam because it's difficult to be a Muslim the way we're looked at with the eye of skepticism. But there are people against all odds turning to Islam because they saw a cartoon, they saw a video, they decided, you know, we know so many Muslims, let's go into it, let's study. So these videos and cartoons have actually made people want to look into the reality. When they went into the reality, they said, this is the truth. Wallahi, I know people personally, personally, not just one, but many whom this has happened to. But when we react with hooliganism, we are now vindicating those who are saying Islam is a barbaric faith. Therefore, my call and my plea to you, my beloved, brothers and sisters from the bottom of my heart i'm telling you when you see negativity please react in the wise way ask yourself how would nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam react he would not make astaghfirullah i don't even want to say it he wouldn't do anything negative so yes we are provoked yes we will be upset but be proactive use the opportunity to educate people Give a little pamphlet. You saw those cartoons? Yes, I did. Well, I just want you to read about the person they're trying to blaspheme because Allah says in the Quran, Inna O Muhammad, peace be upon him. You are way beyond everybody else in your rank, in your status, no matter what anyone does against you to mock at you to try and make a fool of you they will only be making a fool of themselves they will be mocking at themselves your status is engraved 
It's already there. Nothing will change it. That's a guarantee of the Quran. Allah tells Muhammad وسلم, we have protected your reputation from the mockery of those who want to mock. Subhanallah. When they mocked what happened, it destroyed their reputation, not Muhammad's.